Hello. Hopefully my audio is a little better than last time. Last time, last time out, I think I was a little quiet. So, um, let's get started. So the other day, I was working on my RX-7 shell and noticed that the headlights just don't open the way they're supposed to. That's what it looks like. So I'm just going to put that up real quick. Okay, um, let's see here. So, what I gotta try to do... is get this set of headlights to behave. Did I break anything here? No? No, I didn't break anything. Not a very cooperative screw here. Hold on. There we go. <sighs> okay, let me see here. This looks kind of poorly done. But honestly, that's just me. These, these look kind of bad. I need to redo the heat shrink and everything. Right. Good thing I have an entire package of heat shrink. do it, but what I, oh, okay, yeah, I need to take these off before I can put, slide these two key trinks down the wire. Okay, I gotta plug in my soldering iron. Just a second. There it goes. So I need to first remove this one. I might also have to go and search for my um my pack of of LEDs spare LEDs, just in case one of these is burnt out somehow. Okay. Hmm. 
And then I'll try to reattach this. enough. That's good enough. That looks about right. You just slide the uh, heat shrink up to cover. Like that. And then I uh, Heat up the heat shrink until it shrinks. Basically, just what it says on the tin, really. Okay, cool. I might want to do that to the other side too, just to make this nice. I also think this heat shrink might be a size too big, so we're going to change it out for one that's uh, a size smaller. Hopefully that looks... hopefully that's the right type. Okay, yeah, that's... that just barely fits over it, which is perfect. That's what you want when sizing heat shrink. It'll shrink nicer that way. It'll shrink tighter. Okay, that's on there. I think I will also need to do the other side, so let's pull that pull the old heat shrink off. Something I do with these thinner wires is because the insulation is so thin, if you got strong nails, you can actually pop the end off without needing wire strippers. Super handy if you know what you're doing. Okay. Let's get this tinned up a little bit. Oh no. Oh, no. Give me just a second. I think I might need to move my soldering station a little bit closer. And I might have to solder this one a little bit off screen.
Okay, that should do it. And then I just gotta get it nice and solid onto here. good enough. Let's get that heat shrink on there. Oh, that's going to be a lot tighter. those LEDs out of the way for now because I have to actually I think recut some of these some of these parts um, to get the pivot to be in the right spot take the lens out of one of these so I don't lose it. Yeah, that one. So, I need this to pivot pretty close to the surface of the, uh, of the shell, because if I pivot it too low, it moves too much forwards and back. So, Take a look. Take a gander. Give me a second. Is this the right one? Yeah. So, I used to have. I used to have a pivot right about there. Hold on. Just a second. Okay. So, I used to have a pivot right about here. And so, when it pivoted, the whole headlight would shift backwards. And that's not what I want this to do. So I want the pivot to be a little bit more like here. So it doesn't shift backwards and more like turns in in place. Because like this, this part right here is supposed to line up with the body when it opens. So, let's see. Um, yeah, having a pivot right along here somewhere is about right. So if I can start a little little pivot point here. And then I can grab what what else did I bring? Okay. Gotcha. Okay. So this is a shell reamer or hole reamer for hobbies and stuff. I haven't used it in a while because I haven't cut holes in body shells for mounting for a while. But this should be okay. And I need to make it a hole for an M3 screw, probably. M3 is a really standard 
size for remote control car stuff, so... Let me just grab one of these. Um, one of the slightly longer ones. That'll do. Okay, so that needs to be just a little bit, little bit bigger. I should probably put my cutting mat up here too. That would be a good idea. Come on, as you use your brain. There we go. That's better. Okay. Let's see. Okay, that's that's exactly right. That's the right tension that I'm looking for. And now I need to find something that's the appropriate length. And maybe it won't be in this box. Okay. Probably in this box instead. Uh, how long do I want the pivot to be? Maybe a centimeter? Sounds about right. That looks almost right. Okay. Yeah. There we go. So, if this is pivoting in the right spot, and I have it inside the shell, it will pivot like hold on, I gotta hold it in place okay come on, there we go we'll pivot something like uh, like that as long as my hand stays table, which is about right. So I just got to make sure that it stays in alignment. So maybe I need to melt some like plastic onto there. Hmm. That might be what I have to do. That might be what I end up doing. I have a few extra parts here, maybe. Maybe these will help in some way. Nah. But now I know about the right, uh, the right, um, the 
the right shape, I guess. Yeah. This might be pointed out a little bit. I should have foreseen this. I should have foreseen this. But maybe it's not a big deal. I'll just go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. Should be around there. Down. Grab another screw. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Now I gotta take a look at this. Oh, the inner edges do come in a little bit. Okay. That means I have the angle of this a little bit off. So I gotta figure out how I wanna change the angle. If I unscrew it, and I tilt it, and then try to reinstall the screw. Oh yeah, that does it. I just gotta do the same on this side. And kind of torque it over. There we are. That's more like it. So let's see. I need to put something in here so that it likes those um, those threads and aligns it permanently. Hi Jose. Happy Saturday. my epoxy. How was your week so far? Hope it went well. Is my audio better than the last stream? I would sure hope it is. I increased my volume just, you know, by 30%. I forgot my volume knob was all the way down to like 50 before. Oops. this. I need to get this mixed up nicely. Okay.
So far so good. Did some laundry, also some drawing. I hear an echo. You do hear an echo. Uh, I wonder. I don't have any anything set here. That's weird. A slight echo. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I see, I see. This one was not supposed to be... I, the camera has its own microphone. How's, how about now? Is this okay? I should turn my volume up on my microphone just a tiny bit more. It's been a while. I'm very not used to this. Okay. This stuff takes a while to get nice. Uh, let's see. Let me turn up the gain. Maybe the gain is what you need. Uh, 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 testing one, two, three. How about this? Is that a little better? Yeah, the microphone is. Kind of quiet to to start with the one that i have but it sounds pretty decent i would say like i can actually equalize stuff and i i can do like just more i can just do more with it It's just a better quality microphone than the one in the webcam, even though the webcam one is louder. Okay. Oh no. Where'd it go? Found it. But I will try just, just you know, keeping the gain up a little bit higher. Because the microphone is, like, right next to my head. <laughs> okay, that looks, that looks good. And that should keep it from uh, being at a different angle. A different angle than intended, I guess, I could say. Okay. Let's put as much of this as I can into here. Okay. Then I gotta hold it still while I tighten the screw. Is that horizontal? Oh yeah, I, I don't have to worry about that. That looks good. Okay, so 
the wires get bent up a lot from this, so I'm gonna... I'm gonna show you what I mean. So, the LED sits in here, like this. And then when the headlight pops up, it uh, it's it's nice and straight, right? But then when the headlight comes back down, this has to bend quite a bit. So I'm trying to figure out how I can best not have that be a problem. Maybe if I have it come out the side here. Then it's the same stress regardless of if it's a... Uh... installed or not. Or, I mean, popped up. <clears throat> or closed. Right? You know, that might not actually matter. That might not actually matter. I'm just going to close this up. <laughs> oh, I should put some silver in here. Oh, shoot. Where's my silver pen? I, I remember having like a like a reflective silver pen that I could paint uh, basically chrome. But maybe this is fine. Maybe this is fine. This lens looks like it breaks things up nicely anyways. Okay. Just gonna screw this back in. Oh, that's the wrong tip. There we go. And then the other thing I'm going to try to do is make a mount because this mount has to make sure that everything lines up nicely on the underside. All right. So, if I want this top to stay in the right spot, I should probably put some tape to anchor it down. that way. Oh no. Almost fell on the ground again. Let's see here. I'm trying to get this centered exactly. There we go. That looks that looks center enough. I would say. Maybe a little bit more inwards. Give me a second.
Ah, yeah, that's better. Much better. And so here's the underside. It's covered with duct tape goo. Um, that's okay. So I need this to basically mount up nice and flush here. But I also need the screw to be removable. Hopefully, hopefully you can see that. So there's, I'm using the, the putty to get an exact fit kind of shape here. So you don't have to worry about like flat surfaces being perfectly flat. There you go. Then all I gotta do is once it's assembled, I need to attach um, an, a spot to this bottom section that a servo can uh, can push on. But yeah, that's that part. I might have to mix more of this putty for this side. But before that happens, I'm going to go ahead and install this. I think that my, um, I've also got a problem with the controller that controls, um, this right here, because there's actually another channel that it attaches to that gives voltage, but I think the voltage is too high. So if the voltage is too high and these have already burnt out, then I'm going to have to replace the LEDs inside <laughs> and reassemble everything. Okay. Let's make some more of this. I would 3D print it, but that's a pain in the butt. Especially if I can get it done faster this way. Maybe a little more. Is that the right size? No. A little more. Yeah. You may be wondering why I'm wearing a brace. That's because I have a thing that happens with this tendon that controls my thumb. And sometimes it feels extremely weak and sore and painful. So it's better to just keep it 
keep it immobilized. I know how 3D printers work, so I'll believe it. Well, I mean, it's the pain in the the pain in the ass part is that you have to 3D design something in like software before you can actually print it. Um, but with this, I don't have to do design work. Yeah, if you've ever, if you've ever, you know, pulled a muscle, it's kind of like that, except for this is like chronic. It happens, I don't know. It's been happening about once or once a month or once every two months ish ever since the first time it happened back in uh, holiday season last year. I lifted a TV. Um, I like clawed my hand out wide, really, really wide. Um, to try to lift a TV box and pulling that hard on my thumb to open it out this way caused this this tendon to like start like having problems with the little with the little ring the sheath that in the wrist that keeps it in place because you actually have like a bit of like a like a sheath right here that like a strap it holds the tendon in place so that when you pull up you know it stays inside the wrist instead of popping out yeah <clears throat> that's okay i'm sure it'll be be gone in like a year or two it makes it also really really bad if you use your phone a lot and you swipe up with your thumb a lot because it uses the same tendon. <clears throat> you know... <coughs> Ugh. I have a feeling that if more people got this injury, like if everybody got this injury, we wouldn't be on our phones so much. <laughs> and we'd all be happier. Because cause there's actually some science, um, some studies that have been done searching about like people using social media. And I mean, let's face it, <clears throat> if you're using your phone all the time and scrolling up, it's probably probably social media. Um, but yeah, the, the study found that social media, uh, caused a noticeable decrease in a person's happiness. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, that, that checks out. <laughs> that checks out. little bit of unhappiness for a little more mental health. You know what? That's fine. Everybody needs to take mental health seriously. I will say, though, um, it is very easy for a person to weaponize mental health as, like, a catch-all shield a catch-all way of um, avoiding addressing things that they need to address. So, there, there's like a fine line. It's a, it's a fine line. You have to be aware of it, and you have to try to, you know, figure figure yourself out. But you can't be using it to like force other people to do what you want. Or to ignore that people have things that they need you to do
because you don't live all alone, isolated from society. We all live in a society, for better or worse. Okay. All right. The other day I asked my kid if... <laughs> I asked my kid how my voice sounds. Does it sound like I'm an internet netizen who's been on the internet too long? She says, yeah, but you're old too. And I'm like, oh, ow. <laughs> Because, like, we notice, like, this sort of, like, a way of speaking. Like, if you're chronically online, always, like, always talking to people on Discord, never, like, talking to people in person. There's, like, a certain way of speaking <laughs> or certain accent that you get from the internet. And I was like, do I have that accent? <laughs> Turns out, yeah. I have that accent, but like the, the old, old person version. I find that kind of funny. Hopefully once those dry, I can pop them off <clears throat> and uh, make them spin nicely. More like an aunt in my opinion. Well, I am an aunt. I do have nephews. I'm not nephewless or nieceless. Fair enough, though. Fair enough. That reminds me of, uh, that reminds me slightly of, uh, the, the manga, uh, my Anna, my dad is the queen of all VTubers. <laughs> oh, that, that manga is pretty nutty, but also really funny. Especially since the, the mom in that is like characterized a particular way as a VTuber. <laughs> you know. The drunk. The angry drunk. eating dried squid. Okay, so that has to dry. I need to do a little bit of maintenance on the actual car. I need to check out some of the... some of the stuff here. Um, you know, I might not have to do anything about this because it's kind of held in place already. I... <laughs> Angry old man on the internet, yeah. Maybe if I put a little bit of like foam right on top, it'll hold it down. So I replaced this battery with a small battery. Let me, let me pull this open for ya. So there's a, a small battery version in here. Ah, 
Oh, these are thumb screws. I mean, that's that's exactly what the internet would do, though. You know this. You know this. The internet would find every which way to... <clears throat> to what? Uh, tease. A VTuber. Yeah. Okay. So... This is supposed to keep the battery in, but, uh, battery kind of keeps itself in. Because there's a, a section in the back here. That's okay. Yeah. <clears throat> I feel like I feel like I'm missing something. Because this used to have a huge battery. It went from, from all the way back here and extended all the way to this front area. And it like butted up against this here. Oh. <clears throat> Let's see, is anything. Is anything loose? Nope. What is... what did I put here? What is this? Oh, it's a... it's a capacitor. Okay, that's fine. I don't need this to be plugged in. When I play with remote control cars, I kind of feel like a middle-aged dude talking about their one-of-one one Corvette, how rare it is. Oh, this this rare thing, that rare thing. Oh yeah, it never came from the factory with, uh, with that except for mine, blah blah blah. It's kind of funny. It's kind of funny to think about. <laughs> Nobody, nobody likes these things anymore. Well, I mean, I guess they respect them, but they don't like driving them anymore. Maybe I should get some parts. Maybe I should install some parts. I have a lot of cheap parts and a lot of expensive parts mixed up together, because I didn't build this... Um, on a budget, really, but I was still trying to save money. So I just got the stuff that was visibly really expensive, and then the less visible stuff, I was like, oh uh, yeah, I can cheap out on that. <clears throat> oh, do you like how the the suspension works in the front? It's, it's pretty cool, because this comes up, and there's a rod that goes, I don't know if you can see it, From here to here, just just right under there, and it pushes up on this L-shaped piece, and then that squeezes the shock absorber. I I find it really really cool looking. Um. Which is why I have it. Uh, but nobody uses them. Nobody uses them this way. <clears throat> because objectively, it's not actually that good. <clears throat> I'm just a nerd. Who likes complicated things that move.
Okay. <clears throat> there we go. It's nice and tight. Click this on. I like how everything snaps together nicely. Like it, it just makes it really easy to do stuff on these because you got the the coil suspension in the back, but they're held with little ball points, so you could just <clears throat> pop them off. And if you want to swap and try a different spring and shock absorber, you can. You can also take the springs off. Um, yeah. It's just kind of, it's just kind of cool. Or, I guess I think it's cool. <clears throat> I'm really not over my cough, am I? Yeah, so this is how one of these goes together. There's oil inside of this cylinder, and there's like a piston that moves back and forth. Um, it just slows down the motion of stuff, and then you put the spring on, and you have to push the spring down so that the shaft is showing. That way you can put the little collar on and there it goes. You know, some of these parts are actually really hard to find. I think a lot of these are discontinued pieces. I know that the silver carbon is, is discontinued. It's so blingy. I love it. <clears throat> yeah. I should bring some of my other cars out and see if there's anything I need to do with those. Does anybody know what these are? <clears throat> anybody seen these before? They're so cute, aren't they? I, I know they're a little dusty, but... Aren't they adorable? I need to dust this off though. I was not into Hot Wheels when I was younger. Surprising, isn't it? With with how much I'm into cars now, why I wasn't into Hot Wheels. I think it was just because the Hot Wheels don't move. They just roll. <clears throat> but yeah. 
This one's got four wheel drive. I remember these. These were sold at a at a store called Radio Shack. Um, I think they went like bankrupt in like two thousand and ten or something like that. Basically, they didn't exist after that. Um, but these were sold there for like fifty bucks. Obviously, this has some, like, upgrades attached to it. Like, the all-wheel drive was, like, another 20 bucks, and then... <clears throat> and then, like... Uh, a wheel set was, like, another 10 bucks or something. Tires. More. Like, 10 bucks. Yeah, a lot of things are like ten bucks. I guess that was about the right the right price for for these sorts of things, because then you'd have like kids, they come into the the store and they want to buy something and they have ten dollars from their birthday or whatever. You know, that's how it was. Nowadays, kids have, like, what? How much do they have for their birthday or the Christmas or whatever? Because of inflation? Look at it. It's so pretty. This one I did paint, though. I should- I, oh my god. I wonder if I still have the pictures of when I first got this particular one. I got this one like two years or three years ago. And it was toasted. It was so toasted. Like, it's it's originally yellow, but the the actual car was so toasted because the the previous owner of it had like put they tried to hydro dip it with like craft store paint and it was it just had so much paint on it I scraped every last bit of paint off of it and uh yeah so there's also a four-wheel drive but it's a different generation I love these things they're so cool um, they used to actually make, uh, aluminum upgrade parts, too. So this is, like, upgraded aluminum. And I have an upgraded motor, I think? Hold on. What's it say? Oh, it still says stage one. Okay, never mind. Not an upgraded motor. But this turns a little bit better. And it just... It's just... It just seems heftier? Well, it is heftier because plastic and aluminum, way different. But like, it has like little suspension movements. And you can also change out some of these steering pieces. They made like separate steering pieces that you could change out to change if like the front wheels were pointed in more at the front or in more at the back. And it would change your alignment and everything. It's so nice. But in the end, they were toys, which does give them a limited, limited ability. Yeah, so I actually, um, when it comes to 3D printing, I actually designed these. These wheels. Like, I copied a design, like a real life, real world design. And then, uh, does this, and then made it into a 3D model and sent it off to get it printed by one of the, uh, high resolution printers. 
It's still really wobbly, though. Yeah, it's really wobbly. I wish I had a... something that could stop it from wobbling. But, like, it was so cool, because, like, see all these screws? See all these screws here? You could take... You could take the pieces off. You could take the pieces off. You'd have... You'd have a... Like, body kits. They would sell body kits. You could have a different hood. Or different side skirts, or a different front bumper. It was really cool. It was called the X-Mods. And they came in, like, this nice carrying case that was about, like... Uh, probably about this big. Maybe a little bit bigger. A little bit, and like, like this. And it had like a carrying handle, and it was like a clamshell case. And everything fit nicely inside of it. It was, it was really neat. I do miss it. I do miss it. I remember bringing $50 worth of quarters to high school to buy one off of um, one of my classmates who didn't care about them anymore, but he had gotten one for, I think, Christmas or his birthday or something, like, a couple years back and just never played with it. And I was like, do you have one of these? And he was like, oh, yeah, yeah. And I was like, hey, can I buy it from you? So I paid him 50 bucks, all in quarters. I was like, I was like 14. If by some weird circumstance he happens to be watching this, which I don't think that's going to happen, but if that happens, I'm sorry you had to carry $50 of quarters back home. That's all I had. I was saving up quarters. That's all I had. I didn't have bills to pay you with. I had quarters to pay you with. And I couldn't get them exchanged at a bank account yet because I didn't have a bank account yet. <laughs> kind of funny, though. The things that we get up to when we're kids... Right, so, like, the hood comes off. It ta I, I mean, it takes a little bit to do, but, like, the hood comes off. These, like, first-generation ones had additional things. <laughs> um, some of them had removable headlight lenses, so the other one that's sitting over there um, had a different headlight lenses on it. But, yeah. It's so cool that you can take off all these bits and pieces and swap them for ones that look different. Uh, in the box, they actually came uh, disassembled. So when you assembled it for the very first time, you would basically learn as a kid how these things went together. Right. Oh no, my screw. No, my screw. Where you go? Okay, there you go. So now there's like a side skirt. Um, they actually had a wide body kit for this. Like it was molded so that it would fit over everything and like not stick out too bad and it was actually really cool it was actually really cool that they had that look how nicely that sits it makes you feel like you're 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 back in the 2000s 
um, on the set of The Fast and the Furious. Like, like the original Fast and the Furious stuff, not like, not like the new stuff that is like, oh, oh, family, let's go cross the border and go on a high stakes mission to go do cyber criminality because family. No, this was, this was like good old, um, hey, I got a car, let's put some shit on it. Yeah, these kits also came with little tiny screwdrivers that were about, about this size. Uh, but this isn't the right screwdriver. It's not one of the ones that came with it. I actually do have some original screwdrivers sitting around somewhere. I don't know where they are. I don't know where exactly they are, but I have them. Oh my gosh, I remember the forums too, back in the day. Back in the day, people used forums to talk about stuff that they liked. They didn't go on Facebook, they didn't have a Reddit group, they didn't have a Discord, they went on a forum. They went on a forum and they asked questions that have been asked before, but they could never know that somebody else already asked the question. And then some other member who's been there for a couple years would chime in and say, Hey, you're stupid, use the search function. Doesn't that sound like people on the internet? <laughs> oh, another one that, that people used a lot was the a link. They'd be like, hey, where can I find this? Where can I do this? Where can I do that? And then they would be responded with a link. And that link just takes them to a site called Let Me Google That For You. And it just pulls up a Google search. <laughs> and doesn't actually give an answer. And they would do that so much, even when the answer they gave never actually answered the question. It was, it was just ginormous egos on the internet. One after another, everybody a little, everybody trying to be their own micro celebrity on a on a forum. Ugh, I wouldn't call those the good old days; those were the shit old days. But you know what? Stuff ain't any better today. You know, I used to be able to order old stock, new old stock of these body shells on, um, from, uh, from Radio Shack. I would just go up to the counter and be like, hey, here's a part number of a product that you used to carry or a product that you do carry. Uh, let me buy that or, or special order that. And that's just it. That's just how it went. Oh, this one's kind of nice. This one has a lot of lights on it. I don't think all the lights work. Um, I think my underglow is broken. But like, come on. It's so blingy. It's so blingy. I also rewired it to use a uh, different, different, um, different batteries, higher voltage batteries. 
So it's actually supposed to be a little bit quicker. But none of this none of this stuff was designed super, super well. So if you look at the back of this, it's supposed to be flat, right? They're supposed to be flat. And they're not. You have to like push them up to make them flat. <laughs> There's droop on one side. It, yeah, it's it's kind of awful. <laughs> They were not designed super well. But this is the first generation, so... I mean, I guess it was to, to be expected. They are just designed as a toy. I do want to get um, front knuckles that are aluminum, though, because these plastic ones are a little bit wobbly. The wheel is also really wobbly. Actually, let me try turning this on. Does it? Nope. No lights. Let me plug this in and see if it works. Okay. Underglow? Underglow, yes, no? No. Darn it. No underglow. Okay, let me see if the headlights work, though. Playing with remote control cars, you get good at handling things. Especially small remote control cars, you get good at handling, like, small wires and and plugs. If it wasn't so expensive, I would recommend it as a skill builder. Uh, let's see. Let's turn this on. No? No. Maybe it doesn't get... It doesn't turn on unless there's like a radio signal. That might be it. Ah, oh, well, whatever. It's a GTR. I could care less. It just looks nice. I like GTRs a lot. I mean, who doesn't like GTRs? Okay, I'm gonna put these up and see if... See if stuff is ready to be worked with. On the body shell. Okay. Wonder if this is hardened up. Nope, it's still soft. Well, that dashes my hopes of getting this done in one stream. I guess I'll have to wait for it to dry over the course of, like, a day. A full day. It's 24 hours. Ah, uh, well. That's alright. I kind of want to play, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! against somebody else, Good. like a, another VTuber or something, maybe, using our desks and actually, like, playing with physical cards, because I have cards. Hold on. I have, like, you know, it'd be, it would be kind of fun. It'd be kind of fun. Oh, I should show you some of my other cars, actually. Give me a second. I'm gonna go grab them. But I also gotta put these away first. I don't want them to crowd out everything.
few more cars. So, um, this one, I don't know if I ever got this one working. This one's a, uh, let's see here, Kyosho M01, I think. MR01. It's, it's kind of, it's a little bit intimidating to pull these out because you have to actually stretch the body out wide. And if the body is old, like this one is, it's a little risky. Because, you know, old plastic doesn't like to bend. But this one seems high quality enough that it stayed bendy. This is actually a pretty nice, uh, pretty nice MR2. Um, there's the, uh, the VM, VM180 wide body. It doesn't really look like a wide body because it's really mild. And like in real life, um, people try to find these like rare wide bodies and they'll spend like huge amounts of money. Oh, okay, I know what's missing. I don't have a spring on this. I don't have a spring to attach here. This is a... What is this? Micro receiver RA1... No? Yes? Made in Japan. Okay, that doesn't tell me anything. But this Kyosho, the only thing Kyosho has been decent at is, um, it's like micro scale stuff. So like this size, because a lot of people in the larger sizes kind of like just bag on them. Here's a GTR. Of course, there's another GTR. Every car enthusiast is GTR crazed. Like there's as if there's no other car that exists that is cool. Bit of a bit of a failing of mine among other people's failings too. I need to re-glue some of this cuz do you did you see that? It's kind of kind of flimsy right now cuz this other bottom section is not glued down correctly. I'm wondering if you see that. Because this side it doesn't do it. But this side it does. It lifts. It lifts, but it doesn't work out. Okay, so this one's a more modern chassis. This was a this is a MR02. A little confusing, right? MR2? MR02? Thanks, Kyosho. But, um, yeah, this one actually has a spring. And it has a, what's called a disc damper. I don't know if you see that. So there's a disc here, and it rubs against this plate, and there's another disc just below it. That, like, presses upwards, and they're kind of spring-loaded. And basically, they're trying to use the friction of the disc sliding to uh, slow down the motion of of the the rear motor pod twisting and uh, and compressing. And then the other part is down here, so you got um you got this little little T, this little H bridge section here. That is actually supposed to flex. 
<clears throat> and so that acts as your your spring for this and in a little bit for the up and down but not as much as this main spring here It's kind of neat how all the batteries sit in the very bottom. Or at least I think it is. <clears throat> and um, you'll be able to tell the difference between this and like something like an axe mod because if you like try to wobble the wheel, it doesn't wobble as much. There's like a significantly reduced wobble. It's just a lot more precise. It's a lot nicer. I've never driven it. <laughs> what is up with me and collecting shit that I never use? So this one's a Supra. And this one is an X mod, so it has that stuff under there. There we go. This one was customized and painted by yours truly. I cut all this by hand, these holes. You can, I don't know if you can tell, uh, but they're a little off-center and asymmetrical. <laughs> this side is a little bit too far this way. I was gonna try to mold it and make, like, reproducible body kits, but... I decided against it. I even have a little diffuser here. Look at the little, little, um... Little muffler. People used to do this thing with these with these little cars, and they would um, I don't know if you can see it here. I don't know if you can see it here. There's like this blue, red, and yellow kind of fade tip on there. So this is actually just like a, an antenna. Like an old telescoping antenna that they broke pieces off of. <clears throat> or I broke pieces off of. <laughs> and um, I used blue Sharpie and yellow Sharpie and red Sharpie to get that kind of like fade tip. It was really dumb. I was really dumb. Yeah, this, this is supposed to be a pearlescent black. It's very hard to tell where the regular black starts and the pearl begins. You, you really have to see it in the sunlight. But I don't have like a sun flashlight thing. So it's kind of hard to see. Um, I use the actual paint code, the same paint code that one of my... No, my first car was that color of black. <clears throat> oh yeah, this one's been modified. I put a mini Z um, set of electronics inside so that it can be more precise and stuff. But in the end, it's still technically an X mod, so it won't be as good. I do need to replace those knuckles. Those. These knuckles are kind of eh. But yeah, I did a few modifications here. <clears throat> um, for, for this, I can actually make this so that I unscrew this little nut right here. And then I can adjust the tilt of this wheel this way or this way. Same with the back. 
I was really into, like, getting all this, like, random stuff. Back in the day. Someday I might, like, actually restore it, but, yeah. <clears throat> these are... These are wheels that I made specifically for the Supra. Look at the little decals. I don't know if you can see that easily. There you go. So... <clears throat> um, so for, like, people who really like stance cars, there is, like, this thing called... Um, there's thing called Fat Lace, which was, I guess, a company that made, like, stance culture stuff. You know, so, so, explanation about stance, it's like this thing where you put cars really, really, really low to the ground and get the wheels and tires tucked up right up against the fender. So you have basically no clearance at all. Everything scrapes. You can't drive anything. Everything is just art that sits still, but looks like it should roll. And so that that's kind of that's kind of why the gap here is so narrow. Same for up here. And the wheels like kind of stick out a little bit. I don't know if you can see that. I thought it was a really cool look when I was a kid. I still kind of do, except for I would never own a car that was like that, because it would be impossible to use, and basically just a glorified lawn ornament. <clears throat> Especially since I don't do like car shows or anything. Car shows are... Every time I hear about a car show, I don't I don't know about you, but every time I hear about a car show, there's always people leaving the car show being really stupid and like crashing into things, you know, getting police involved to like impound a bunch of cars because they're being stupid. And I'm like, you know, I don't really want to deal with that. <laughs> Especially since some of those people actually, like, they leave the car show, right? They leave the car show, they start spinning their wheels, and then they lose control, and they hit somebody else who was a part of the car show. And I'm just like, no, that, I'm not losing my car that way. I, I, I refuse. I refuse. Oh yeah. So anyways, I think I think I'm going to pack it up for the day. Wait for wait for the RX7's headlights to dry. And then I'll uh I'll get it the rest of the way working um probably next week. Yeah, yeah, next week. That seems about right. So anyways, thanks for hanging. Thanks for hanging out, Jose. I'll see you later. Maybe, maybe next time. There'll be some more people to talk to you and like chat about random stuff in the chat because I don't really mind that. I know people who are like, oh no, you're having conversations in the chat that are not related to the to the streamer. And I'm just kind of like, I don't have anything to talk about. You guys talk about whatever you want. I'm just over here rambling about cars and shit and about how the how the how stuff used to be and how you had to like press rewind to like rewind your rental movies all the way to the beginning otherwise people would have a bad time when they rented it <laughs> like Okay, Grandma, sure. <laughs> Man, stuff changes so fast. 
especially when you when you like see it changing as you're growing up it's like I'm like just a teenager I'm just a teenager and like cell phones are like a whole new thing and 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 then like a couple years later it's just like Oh, so you're telling me, like, elementary schoolers are, like, just playing with iPhones? Like, it's nothing? How'd they even get an iPhone? Where are they coming up with that money? iPhones are expensive! And it's like, oh, wait. <laughs> Cell phone provider, ISP contracts, and all that stuff. Yeah. All right, this this old bird's gonna go. I'll see you next time, Jenna.